All right, I'm back. Z is kiln worshiping. Dean is chilling. How do you know? I've got one kiln cooling. This one right here. Another kiln on its way up. And I've got to take care of this kiln, finally. I'll give you a little bit more of a recap. Started working on this and then had to halt. If you remember, I was getting ready to change out the elements and the relays. And when I cracked this open, saw that this caught on fire in the last firing. So... Instead of a quick fix, I had to wait on my parts. These are called lead wires. I will just replace all of those and run another test. So years and years ago, I did a diagram of my kiln when I had to take it apart the first time because it's just going to learn as you go. So hopefully this video will help you. I'll show you how that corresponds to the kiln here in just a second. She's been a kiln worshiper since she was four weeks old. You good girl, Z. And I'll show you how that diagram correlates with this kiln. So you can see there's all these little ports that hold on to your elements. And then they feed in to the computer there where you see the blue wire sticking out. So all the ones on the left side would be your one and one and your two and two. So this is one straight down to one. And then that wire will come down and be your number one down here. And then the ones on the right is your two and two. Those are the ones that burn up on me. So you've got your three and three, four and four, five straight down to five, six straight down to six, and then they feed right in in order over here. Now those red wires are the thermal couple, and that was the part that I switched out last time. So check out that video on how to change that thermal couple. But right now we're going to focus on these lead wires. So here's a pack of lead wires. They're all, they all have these little numbers on them. So that's nice and convenient. And I'm going to take these apart, see how long it takes me, and run a test on this kiln. So with this change, you just need a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver. And then take note on how these are put together. You've got your kiln element wire coming through. And then you have your wire that you smash in there with the metal piece in the middle with the screw tightening down. So I'm just going to twist this off here, lefty loosey. I'm going to pull that wire. Do my next one. So here's all the short lead wires and then here's all my long ones that are going to take me down to the computer down here in my little container or my bag is a brand new screw i'm going to make sure this is tight i'm going to open this up get myself lots of room put that center bar and push it up to the top feed my element wire through and i'm going to slide this wire underneath. Now they say every six months or so, go ahead and tighten these down. That's maybe why mine shorted out and caught on fire in the first place where the connection got loose. So as this element expands and contracts in the kiln, it will kind of wiggle loose. Plus it's twisted. So over time, as it maybe expands and contracts, it twists. And that little bit of twist will give you just enough play where it can short out like mine did. All right, so for this next one, remember it's one straight down to your next one. I'm gonna slide this screw in. Now I'm gonna get to my other pack that has my blue connectors that are gonna go down to my computer. I'm gonna unbind those. Find my little number one. There it is. All right, so I'm going to take this top cover off, take this little cover off, marry those two, and do the same thing we did at the top now. Push my wires in there, nice and neat. Tighten that down really tight. Then I've got my blue side. It's going to go down to the computer. So here's the computer. 
And like I said, I left that other one attached still. You wouldn't necessarily have to do this as long as you follow your diagram and everything. But I just like to do that, pull them out as I go. Sometimes these are a little tricky to get out. You can take some needle nose pliers and just pull them straight out. There we go. Make sure it's faced the right way. It's like flat on the back and it's rounded on the top. So that rounded top is your front. Let me take my pliers, hold on to that as I push it straight in. Get a really good connection. There's number one. Five more to go. So I went ahead and replaced my number one and number two wires and fed them down here to where they plug into the computer board. There were a couple of these connector screws that were really bad eroded. So I went ahead and swapped those out, saved myself some time. So I swapped out some of these connector screws because they were eroded. So here's one that was eroded really, really bad. One of the two that caught on fire from my number two. So it got really wicked hot and melted and stopped the connection. So I ran a test on this kiln uh, earlier. I'll run a new test now. So what you do here, you push the menu button and I'm going to push it until it says diagnostic. Push enter. And I'm going to push menu again until it gets to amps. So before when I was running this, I was getting no read, obviously, because it was burn up and the positive and negative charge wasn't connected. So let's see what happens now. So it's clicking. So amp one is reading at a 16, amp two at 13, and amp three at 16. So what that's telling me is that middle element, they're about due. That's that. I'm kind of done doing kiln work today. Really, I should change out all the wires, but really today I just fixed what was broken. Um, these elements are due to be swapped out. I'll do an, another video about that and be sure to link it. My elements are, are about due. I mean, instead of doing those today, which probably would have made the most sense, I'm going to run this kiln a couple more times and go ahead and swap the entire kiln.